having a discussion last night. Robbie has this little, uh, it's like a metal ball bearing. Kind of looks like that. <coughs> like a big one. It's like half an inch, three quarters inch uh, diameter. And every time the, the little, that ball is some sort of uh, trigger for him. So when he's tripping, so if he's doing acid or DMT or mushrooms, um, whatever, whatever he does, he has a wide taste in consciousness altering substances. But he, he talks about this ball bearing thing a lot. And he's always trying to explain something. He's trying to bring back some sort of essence from the trip to here. And of course, he never can because we can't actually bring that back. But, uh,. But you can try, you know, you can you can bring sort of fragrances back. You can bring hints. You can bring like pointer feelings. But he's always he would say, you know, if I'm dropping it if I'm dropping this ball into my hand. there are sections, right? As it falls, and then it hits, and then there's a feeling when it hits your hand, right? And also, before you even grab the ball to drop it, there's the premonition or the futuring, the future imagining of the event, and then after the ball has dropped and hit the, the hand, then you now have the memory of it, right? So he was saying, well, what's in between the feeling of holding the ball, watching it drop, the feeling of it hitting the hand, the, the uh, you know, future premonitions before it happened, and the memories of it after it happened. What's in between all of those? What's in between that, that sort of slideshow, so to speak? What's in between that? That's what I want to feel, or that's what I want to explain or grasp. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what he says. And that's, of course, what you can't do. <laughs> you can't do it. It's impossible. Someone once said that when you're here, moving about, the idea is to leave no footprints. Don't, basically don't disturb the realm when you're here. And if you, if you manage to do this, if you manage to figure out how to be here without disturbing the place, then, uh, it remains undisturbed. <laughs> Who would have thought?
if you aren't holding uh, if you manage to be still inside or at least practice the idea of that if you can practice the idea of being still and you practice and you practice and you practice and you do that daily and then you look watch closely how your body how it situates and fits in with the things like how it, if you're in a car how it situates and fits how does it fit if you move your head you know how does how does the the external external how does it move with you because you're not just moving by yourself with all that out there no the the out there changes its angle directly proportionate to your movement no matter how fast you move like you can directly witness the, the connection to the external or the reference point the axis look for the axis if you look for the axis it's an interesting experiment as well if you're there's always some sort of an axis or a grounding point for the physicality spectrum with you at the center, at the sort of center of it. But even if you look within your body, you feel within your body. It's like, if you do this, right? The axis is kind of right here. You can feel that. Move your head like this. Okay, well now we have another axis right here on the neck. You know, but then start moving your body in like a whipping fashion, like a snake. Where's the axis? <clears throat> is it your tailbone? You know? Where's the frame of reference? And if you, if you just practice... Practice examining your situation as it is right now. If you make that a daily practice. Make that a daily practice you'll find your actual relationship to the place that you're in. Maybe you don't want to know your actual relationship to it, but if you, <laughs> if you practice this daily, practice it always, practice introspection, pra practice going directly into feelings when they arise, exploring yourself, you'll find out eventually. Because your inner state directly reflects out the realm. Like, your inner state is chaotic, well, the realm looks chaotic to you as well. It's a direct link. It's really powered, at least as far as the, um, as far as the hive mind is concerned. Even, even those that aren't part of the hive mind, doesn't matter. It's powered by emotions. The whole, this whole place is powered by emotions. Everything. And that's sort of your, your emotions are your most valuable resource. And they have a gradient scale, just like everything else. There's the gross, lower, heavier emotions, and then as you move up the scale, and up the frequency, uh, they start becoming more uh, refined, less visceral, and you move into the sort of spectrum of of nuance. Of love is up there with the nuance spectrum. Uh, curiosity is up there. Muse, you know. But these are the actual currencies. These are the real, these are the really, the true currencies of the place. Uh, the 
fiat stuff, the, the physical currency is, is only like a mental abstract. It's a logic abstract. The logical mind can completely just say, hey, okay, I made this much dollars and thank you. And now I'm gonna go trade it to somebody else for uh, uh, you know some goods. It's only a logical model. The emotional uh, currency exchange system is not as, you can't define it as easily. You can define, that's why people find such solace in, in uh, you know, logic, practicality, um, you know, solid, concrete definitions, because they're not as, <laughs> they're, they're not as slippery, they don't just slip out, slip out of your, your mind grasp two seconds later, like they kind of, they kind of stay put for a little while, the rationality aspect of your mind, but the, the finer emotions, they're kind of squirrely, you know, it's here one second, it's not there the next second. And being that that's how it is, the, the money grubbers, you know, the, the bank systems, the, the energy horrors, or whatever you want to call it, the archontic influence, the, the energy vampire system, like all of that, these they can't really grab the finer emotions. They, they, they can't even see them in the first place. They only see, you know, they only see the gross emotion. Like the the rage fits, you know, the, the super loud screaming, the uh, stark fear, you know, they see those things, but as you go up on the, the gradient scale of emotions, you actually disappear to these entities that are, that would, you know, that would uh, indulge, and, you know, you, you can still, you can still have emotions and enjoy yourself, but you're not putting yourself in danger by showing your, you know, showing yourself to those that would harvest energy. Oh. I think the word Robbie was looking for when he was talking about, you know, what's in between this and this and this and this and then the conceptions, that word is unmanifest or the void, two words for the same thing, but if you meditate for long enough, which is just like a way of wordsing close examination of your present moment, however it arises, if you do that for long enough, then you, you find out, you feel out that space that's in between all the physical actions you feel out that space that's in between the thought structures as they come through your, your mind. You feel out the space that's between the thoughts as they're meshed with all the physical stuff. And then you, you eventually find that whatever that space is, whatever that unmanifest is, is closer to what you are than all the physical stuff. And you see that the physical stuff is simply like a, a dress that the unmanifest wears. Or, you know. Maybe you don't like that terminology, but it's a, a suit of clothes that the unmanifest wears as it goes on being that absolute center still point within the manifest. It's never an out there. It's never a, I'm going to achieve this someday. It's never a, I'm going to make it to heaven, or I'm going to get nirvana, or I'm not going to get that, or I'm going to get thrown in hell. It's already of that. That's all just like regular projection stuff. Once you figure out the, the like regular projection stuff, Anything that brings you out of your your moment, your present moment, is simple projection. 
that's it's as simple as that. If it's bringing you out of the present and telling you that something is somewhere else and you must get there, or something somewhere else is bad and you must avoid it, it's projection. 